Today, I'm going to show you how to build a light and dark mode table component in Figma using variables. Let's start by breaking down the component into parts. First, we'll see that it's wrapped in a card style wrapper. Next, you'll see that there's a header with a heading, a description, and a CTA. As we go to our data, we have a row with column headers, a row with a row header, row items, and an action item. And then at the very bottom, we have the same thing, but without a stroke. So these are going to be the component parts that we design towards. Now that we know what our table component looks like, we can start breaking it down into parts. Let's start off with our CTA. We'll hit F for frame, T for text. We'll just type out CTA. Selecting our frame, we can come over here to Auto Layout, click the plus or Shift A. And you'll see that it's perfectly centered aligned, but we actually wanna come over here and make sure that it is centered both ways even if the padding was changed. We're going to set this to 12 and 12. That will be driven by variables later, our gap to zero. Border radius to four. And now we can select our fill. I'm going to enter a value in here, but what we can do to make a shortcut for variables is click the plus, And you'll see that I actually already created this collection called colors. We're going to just call this G200 and create the variable. And this is really the only place right now in beta that th works that way. Hopefully in the future, we can do that with other methods as well. Come in here, repeat the process. And I like to have all my colors as variables because it means easier fixes in the future. So we're just gonna call this white. And there we go. So we have our CTA, but for prototyping, I like to make sure that I show my hover states. We're going to duplicate this with Command D, come up here and create a component set. We'll drag it back up. We can also apply auto layout to our component set. We'll do that and we can just leave the settings the way they are. Come into here and make this, we're gonna break this. We'll take it down. And then again, what we can do is come into here, create this, we'll call this G300, create our variable and call that good. We can then come into our prototyping tab, while select while hovering, and then change this to our frame two. First select, select our easing, and then we can come back here to our design tab. We'll call this property state, call this zero, and then we'll call this hover. And now, if we drag this instance out quickly, I can make that a little bigger. You can see that that works perfectly. So the next thing we're going to do is build our header component. Holding F and dragging out, we'll create a frame. We're going to have a heading and a description. We can drag this back into here. Now, I like to have everything in auto layout, and when I come across an instance like this, what I'll do is I'll create an auto layout for this, and I'll have this set as a vertical layout and I like to have my multiples of four. We're going to come into here and also select auto layout. And then you'll see that what happens is Figma tries to figure out what the gap number is. And that's why we have this big old gap. But we don't want that because if we have this text, you see how it messes that up. We want this to fill the container so that text can go out and the CTA stays exactly where it is. So if we set this to fill, and then we set this gap to zero, we can, let's set it to 12, so there's just a little bit of a gap there. And then we're also going to get rid of these paddings as well, and now you can see that this fits well. There you go, we have our flexible header. We'll turn this into a component by selecting 
We'll turn this into a component by clicking up here or Option Command K. Next, let's build our cells. We're going to drag out another frame, add more text. I'm going to call this column header. I'm going to add an auto layout, remove the gap and the horizontal padding. And we're gonna keep the, the vertical padding, but I'm going to set it at 12. Aligning this uh, center vertically and then to the left horizontally, so we can you know, keep this on that, that left side. Works perfectly. Um, now, I already have this set to column heading here and I've already set up a style for each type, so I'll apply that now. Now that I have that done, we're going to add the colors, and just like the same process here, I'll put in the hex codes and then add those to our variable set. Next, I'm going to select our four options and we're going to come up to create component set. Now, do the same thing. We'll drag it back up under cells. And here we're going to call this cell type. We'll name these to the corresponding name. And now we have our cell component set up. If I drag this out, you can see we can change the type just like that. The last part of the component we need are rows. If you look, you'll see that there are actually three row types. Our column header, our row with a stroke, and our row without a stroke. We'll start by dragging out a frame, taking our instance, and we're going to duplicate this four times. We'll change this to column header and then selecting our frame, we'll select auto layout and you'll see that it's hugging it. Right now we actually want it to be a fixed width because we want to be able to have our column headers actually fill out the type, fill out the frame. We are going to get rid of that vertical padding because we want the cells padding to take over. And we're not quite done with this component quite yet because we need to match the, the column width to the next row. For our row, we're going to change this to row header and then these three items to our row item. We're actually missing a fifth item and that is our action item. Now you'll notice that our columns are actually misaligned and that's because obviously there's four here and five here. So the way we're going to adjust that, first of all, most likely if we're going to have an action item, we're going to know what that action item is. So I'm not worried about having this set to be hug. Then what we're going to do is come here and see that this is set to 27 width. We'll come back up here and click on this and go to our right padding and type in 27. And you'll see that this now aligns that back in. If we do add a gap to our component, you'll see that it goes back to being misaligned and all you need to do is come in here and add whatever gap you added to your, uh, your auto layout. Next, we're going to select our row header, duplicate it, come back up here, add a stroke, select bottom, and we're going to change our stroke color. Doing the same thing we did before, we're going to add this as N200 add this as a color into our variable library. The next thing we'll do is select all three of these, create a component set. We're going to name these, we'll call this row type. We now have all of our components set up to build our table. Let's create a wrapper for our table. I'm going to drag out a new frame 
and simply holding option on our component, we're going to drag out an instance of each one of these things. Now, since I already have these three selected, I'm going to hit shift for a new auto layout, change our gap to zero. I just noticed that I missed the stroke for this. Instead of editing our instance, I can edit our component. I can come back into here, add our stroke to the bottom, change our color, add our variable, already updated in our instance. The next thing we'll do is add an auto layout here. We're going to add padding and then our gap can be 24. And you'll see that that looks pretty good, right? Well, there's a couple things that we can add. First, let's make sure that everything is filled out so it's responsive. You'll see that we're already missing that. There we go. Let's add some styling to the wrapper itself. I'm also going to call this table wrapper. Let's add, let's go with 16. You'll notice we might have to bump this up a little bit. That's fine. I think that looks pretty good. We can also add a min width so the content doesn't overlap each other. We can come into here and hat add min width and set that to 532. Now you'll notice that I can stretch this. It won't go past that limit, making the text overlap each other. We've created this table component with a lot of primitive variables. If we want to expand this to say a light and a dark mode or be able to quickly edit this, we need to expand our local variables. Let's look at some of the things that we can add into our variables in order to do that. That's going to be things like our radius, our gap, our padding and spacing. And the other thing of course is changing our colors between light and dark mode. So let's show you how to do that. Now, rather than having these be our primitive colors, what we're going to do is come in here and create variables just like we did for our padding, but instead these will be for our colors. Now that I completed that, what we can do is actually come in here. I've created my variables and now we can come in here and create our light and dark mode. I don't have all of my colors that I've predefined in my color mode, so I'm going to add those really quick. I've added all my colors, so now I can come back here to my color mode and reset all these. Now that we've finished our variables, we can come into each one of our component parts and set the variable to the correct color. Instead of the fill up here, you are going to come down here and select it. And because we've edited these components, everything else should automatically update. So you'll see that these are already aligned, including over here. I do like to have nice documentation. So the other thing that we can do is come into here. Well, first of all, it looks like we forgot our stroke. So I'm going to add that really quick. And that reminds me that I actually need to add it into here too. This is our primary border, and these are our secondary borders. So now that we have that done, I'm going to also come in here and we're going to set this to 32, which is our extra large. And we will grab our component header to make this match. We will call this light. And we can actually come up here and I'll go into my color mode and create a string. I'm going to call this documentation heading. We'll call this light mode and dark mode. And if we come into here, select this little guy, we can come down to documentation mode, click on it. 
The next thing, of course, is add an auto layout. And we'll add this component XL. Because this is documentation, I'm not gonna worry about creating individual ones. So we'll leave that like that. And we'll call this light mode. And before I duplicate it, the one thing that I like to do is come over to here to our selection colors and we can select all of these and see that, look at this, we're actually missing one. We can have it select the layers and we can come in here and we will just simply select table surface because I already know which one missing. We can duplicate it holding option shift and come over here to our mode. That's what this little icon is. And we'll select dark and voila, you'll see that this has changed to dark mode now. I will add on top of this, if we want this to change, instead of having this be table text, we'll come over here and we will call it uh, table text header and it will use that same color as over here. To wrap this up, I wanna show you how to properly turn this into a component. Now the problem is, is if I were to turn this into a component right now, drag out an instance and select a row, when I hit Command D to duplicate the row, you'll notice that it turns a new instance of the row here, but not in the component itself. This is a limitation of Figma, and honestly, it's kind of annoying when you want to show something like live data from a table. So what you're going to have to do until they fix that is basically come in here and duplicate a bunch of rows into your component. And now when we come in here and drag it, let's say we don't want to have all of these uh, 10 or so, we can actually hit the delete key and that will actually do the same thing as hiding these. There you have it, that's how you build a table using variables in Figma. If you're interested in seeing how to insert live data into this table, hit that subscribe button and that will be my next video coming out shortly. Thanks for watching and stay creative.